Hey YouTube, what is going on? Joseph Vollmer here, and yeah, if you can't tell, I'm wearing this goofy chest rig tonight. I'm back out in the garage. Uh, we're going to be working on a Honda Valkyrie some more. Uh, first thing we are going to do is I'm going to pull the new final drive out of that box. Well, not new; it's used, but it's going to. It's the original from the bike. Long story short, it's the original from the bike. We're going to pull the pinion cup off of it. We're going to swap it with the pinion cup on that final drive, which has some issues. And then I'm going to try and get the back end of this bike put back together tonight. I'm going to take you guys through doing that. Um, and I've got the goofy got the goofy chest rig here on. That way, hopefully, I can get you guys a better picture of exactly what I'm doing. It's not going to be so far away. Uh, I'm also going to try and get a little bit better lighting down underneath the bike. I noticed the other night, or, yeah, the other night I was editing some of the earlier videos um, that you'll see cards for up here throughout the video or you'll see annotations on the end the end screen at the tail end of the video for them so watch for those um, but basically in those videos we went through and put new rear wheel bearings in new rear wheel bearing we, gosh darn it i can't say it tonight we put in new rear wheel bearings and seals uh, we also replaced the shock bushings we re also replaced the swing arm bearings so all those videos the lighting wasn't the greatest i apologize for that we're going to try and do that a little bit better this evening, um, get you some better light, get the tail end of this bike put back together, and I'm going to take you along with me and show you how it goes. And hopefully with the chest rig, I'll be able to get you a little bit better video of exactly what I'm doing and where my hands are and what we're doing. And I've also got a nice little microphone with the new camera that you're seeing me on right now, so hopefully the audio is a lot more clear. Um, been having issues with that for a while, but unfortunately none of the cameras that I had had the capability of an external microphone except for the one that I have on my helmet and I don't have a mount to put that one on a tripod or a chest rig or anything else so uh, it makes it a little difficult but anyway do me a favor while we're getting into this video guys if you haven't already clicked the subscribe button if you have make sure you hit that notification bell that way you'll get notifications on all the videos in this series and any other videos that I post when they come up and do me a favor please share these with your friends if you enjoy them rate them when they're done and as always, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments section. I will try to answer them for you. So without further ado, I'm going to take a few seconds, get some things set up, and then we're going to dive into the uh, final drive and prep it to go back on the bike with the rear wheel and everything else. So give me just a second, and we'll be right back. This final drive is the one. Oh, this one was the original on the bike. Um, as you can see, we're going to have to clean it up just a little bit. It's got some crap down in there. It's been sitting on a shelf since I bought the bike four and a half years ago. And the splines in here, although it's hard to see, I know, and I don't have... Those splines still look brand new. Uh, they still have plenty of good high molly grease in there. Uh, we're going to do our best to clean as much of that out as we can so we can get some fresh grease in there when we put this all together. Otherwise, this drive is in really good shape. Um, I can grab the pinion cup. Everything spins nice and free. Nothing's binding up. But you can see the reason they pulled it off is, uh, I don't know if you can tell, the splines inside that pinion cup, hopefully you guys can see in there okay, half of them are trashed. So... I presume what happened was the pinion cup and the drive shaft had issues and they probably bought the final drive that was on that this one that I'm dragging into frame now, hopefully. They bought this one online or somewhere it used and put it on the bike. Now one thing about this one Got a good pinion cup on it, and we're going to slide the drive shaft out. Oh, if I can. I had it out before. There we go. But you can definitely tell that's getting a little gunky looking. So we'll get all that cleaned off. Definitely smells like some nasty ass gear oil. But 
we'll get that cleaned up. We'll get this pinion cup off, get it all cleaned out, and get it ready to go back together. I do have a new seal for the drive shaft uh, that goes down inside the pinion cup. So, oh sh! Pardon my language, guys, but I forgot about the vent, and I just peed gear oil all over the floor. And considering that it's supposed to be royal purple, that looks absolutely horrendous. You can see a bunch of metallic in it, which, if you notice, on this final drive is really stiff. I don't know what the deal is, but I think it's done. So... Take a time. I'm going to take a pause for a minute. Try and get the gear oil cleaned up before I kill myself in it. Or end up with it scattered all over the floor. I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, so this is. We're going to hit. Try and hit this. A little bit of brake clean. That's some nasty looking crap coming out of there. Now, I don't know if you can see them, but there's two holes down there in the bottom that you want to make sure don't get blocked because they actually circulate gear oil up from the differential to lubricate the splines in the pinion cup. So, we're going to make sure we get all that gunk out of there. Now you can see that looks 10 times better. The splines inside there are actually in really good shape yet. You can see there might be a couple of little shiny spots of wear, but I don't see any I don't see any major wear in there. So we're going to clean up the drive shaft and see how it looks. Grab it. Same deal. This end down here, it's going to be hard to see, there is a external snap ring there that we're going to have to remove to remove the spring. That way I can get the seal off because I do have a brand new seal for this. And we'll do that here in just a minute. Now that that's all cleaned up, I want to take a good look at the, oh, the differential that we're going to be putting on as soon as I get the pinion nuts cleaned up. I am just a shade on the worried side because I don't know if you can see how it kind of looks a little crappy right in there. Unfortunately, the one thing I don't have is a new seal for the where the pinion cup rides. And the old pinion cup. No, it's actually in pretty good shape. So, okay, so if I turn it over that way, there's definitely no gear oil coming out that way. So let's go ahead and pull the drain plug and see if we get any gear oil out. I'm curious to see what the gear oil that's in here looks like considering I've never used this one. Drain plug doesn't look too bad. A little bit of crap stuck to it, but nothing you wouldn't expect. Well, that's not good. Okay, well, we pull the full fill plug out. This has been drained, so let's take a good look at it and see what we're dealing with here. Make sure everything's clean ish. 
don't know how good of a, how good you guys' view is down inside there. But the gears still have a good coating of oil. They still have a good edge on them. I don't see any damage to any of the gears, which is good news. The bearings feel really nice and smooth. So grab a full can of brake clean here and we're gonna go to town on, see if we can hose some of the gunk out of the differential and then off, oh, lovely. Then I'll fill it up with fresh gear oil <clears throat> once we get it back on the bike. Okay, well, there's a little bit of backlash in the gears, which is normal. Let's see. The wear pattern looks really good. I don't know. I don't know how well you guys can see down in the hole there. But I can see the wear pattern. And it's nicely spaced on the gears. The gears are all... None of them are blued like they've been overheated. So that's a bonus. Okay. Thought I saw a chunk of metal down there, but I think it was just a little bit of a piece of silicone from when they sealed it up originally. Not a big deal. I'll wipe off the seals. We're going to thread our plugs back in just so we don't pee anything out on the floor. Now that I've got that done, we're going to make sure that all of this area is clean. There's an O-ring right there. Real quick, I'm going to find that o-ring then we'll get our pinion cup installed um, I'll get my snap ring pliers we'll get the seal on the yeah needless to say sometimes that's easier said than done so there's the snap ring there's the retainer for the ring then the spring you keep them all in order then We should be able to, with any luck, get the seal off. Which, there again, be easier said than done. Let's be gentle with the splined end of the drive shaft. You don't want to jack it up. Don't want to stab yourself either. Okay, there we go. Seal is off. The part number for this seal. Hopefully that's showing up. Nine one two six one ME nine zero zero five. That is the Honda OE part number for that seal. And the seal installs this side facing the, the um, large splined end of the drive shaft. Before we run it down there, I'm just going to wipe any crap off of that. Make sure it's good and clean. And just 
just to help me out. Just a touch. Whoa, that was a little more than a damn touch. That went everywhere. I hate that new can. Slide that down. And we're going to gently work it all the way down to that shoulder. I don't know if you can see the shoulder right there. We're going to try and get it all the way down. Oh, sorry guys. We're sitting flush on that shoulder. I probably do make a handy driving tool called a piece of pipe for this, but I don't happen to have one this size, so I'm just going to use my fingers the way God gave them to me and push them down there. There we go. That's installed. Now, with any luck, we can drop spring, the retainer, and most of the time with the snap rings now, if I get it started over the splines, I can just slide it down and not have to try and fight it on with the snap ring pliers, which makes life much easier. Just spread it enough to get it over the splines, and then I can And there it is, nicely retained underneath the lip. All is good in the world. That's what you want. So that's ready to go back in. That retainer's in good shape. Now, in the new O-ring for this one, hopefully you guys can see this well, 91 356MG9003. Now, and we're going to very gently work it down. take my pocket screwdriver most of the time I can use it get it started and you, you got to be very careful you want to get under the o-ring where you can just kind of walk it down into the groove there we go then we're going to take some more of our Loctite LB 8012, which is a 65% molly grease. You do not want to get this crap on you. That's why I was having so much trouble holding on to that package. I got some on my fingers and it's really slick, which is a good thing. And I'm just going to paste it around there, make sure I get that O-ring really well. And we'll grease up the new drive flange before we slide it in but considering what happened to the last one I definitely want to make sure this thing is very well lubricated before I put it all together so that $36 tub of grease is a heck of a lot cheaper than 400 some dollars in parts just be on the safe side what we run it on, we're going to put a little bit of grease down in these splines. They should get lube from the gear oil, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. 
and having a little bit of the this molybdenum disulfide grease maybe get mixed in with the gear oil it's not going to hurt anything just get that down into the splines put a little bit more around the edge so it gets into that seal hopefully it lubricates that seal because I don't know how long that seal's been sitting dry so just a light coat here to make sure our seal doesn't run dry and burn out prematurely I should just be able to very gently slide that down in that spins nice and freely and you can kind of see how the grease is pushed up around the splines which is good and then we get our pinion nut started and paint all the old crap off my socket. And we're just going to give her a little thump from the impact to get her down and tight. There we go. I felt it pull it in nice and tight. All right. So at this point, that should be ready to go back in the bike. We've got all the O-rings replaced in it. We've got a new seal here. It does say to pack the seal with grease, so we'll do that before we install it. Now this stopper ring, you are supposed to replace every time you pull the drive shaft out, which that I did not know, and I didn't have to order one, but this one seems to be in pretty good shape. It's not coming loose or falling off, so we should be good in that regard. Okay guys, so we're down here into the bike now, and I hope you guys have a good view of what I'm working on. We're going to coat the drive shaft end of the splines with some of this nice mo the molly grease. I guess I could get you in frame here. Get a good coating of that on the splines down here. A little excessive isn't going to hurt. And then, with any luck, I should be able to, there it goes, okay, that's, that's engaged, now we'll seal a good and generous coating and get some of these splines as well. Alright, now it's time to slide this final drive in. So we're gonna stick it in vent up. I may have to camera angle up a little more get this top stud started Ugh. I'm 
out of here. Oh, man. Grab my oh, drive flange. This is the instructions for the molybdenum, molybdenum paste application for the final drive flange. It says for cars with a drive shaft, but it's <laughs> it's not a car. So I want you to put them inside here, out here, five grams on the outside uniformly, one to two grams uniformly on the inside, three to five grams uniformly to the large diameter inner surface. Uh, this is a suitable quantity to the shaft, and then of course the same here. Does it on the five on the okay? So for this damper, we don't put any on the pins. It says, but I may just go ahead and apply a little bit to be safe. Now, there's my new flange, and it already came with the O-ring back here on the back. But if you need that O-ring, yeah, that O-ring is the 91358-MikeGolf9-003. That is this O-ring here. I'm going to save this because this one already has it on there. And then I'm going to roll my, before I go too far here, we're going to roll the wheel over. Set our drive flange over here. Lay the wheel down. Now, we have another O ring. It is the 91. Let me rotate this light. 91302 MA6 003. That O ring goes in this little groove right here. I'm going to take it. Very gently get it down into that groove. Okay, so that all rings in. Then we're going to take our drive flange. Oh, before we do that, we have, yeah, that goes down in there. Okay, so we're going to take our drive flange. We're going to apply our paste inside the flange. splines just to be on the safe side since they are in a metal bushing it'll keep them from wearing Now, before we install that, we have, it is a thrust washer. It is 42616-MAJ-G02. Now, I would highly recommend these things are cheap. You can get them on cheap cycle parts. I didn't find them on uh, Revzilla, but I would buy a handful of these 
and replace these every time you replace your rear wheel because this is just a plastic thrust washer. So we're going to stick that in there just like that. I'm going to put a light coating of paste on the outside of it just to keep, hopefully, keep any friction on it to a minimum up against the rear wheel. Then we're going to flip our, ah, oh, I got it on my fingers. Flip our drive flange over. She should drop right in. Maybe take a little wiggle in here. Store supposed to be it didn't move. It's just all these new parts. I guess it's a wee bit tight going in here. There we go. It's about to go that time. Before I roll the wheel up in here, I'm gonna coat the living snot out of these splines with this grease. get down inside the hub as well and then we're gonna make sure we have a good coating on the splines if you can see them which I'm, I got you in a bad position I know but I'm gonna try and get you where you can see get down into these splines where we already applied some just gonna hit it with a little more to be on the safe side The axle goes in from the drive side. Now, I got the axle through, but I don't want to leave the shocks hooked up just yet because I'm too high up in the air and it's wanting to tip the jack backwards, which is not cool. Now that we've got that started, I can go ahead and Get my brake caliper back up here. Okay guys, so hopefully you can hear me okay. As you can see, my camera battery croaked on me while I was mounting the, the uh, rear tire, I believe. Somewhere in all this, it croaked. So, ah, I'm gonna get that out of there now. There we go. We've got the rear differential on, I still need to fill it with gear oil, not a big deal. Um, we've got the axle nut is in, it is torqued. I have replaced all the O-rings, the thrust washer, O-rings in that side, wheel bearings, seals. I've got one bolt to tighten up on the brake caliper. Torque on the axle nut is 81 foot-pounds. And the axle nut does go in from the drive side. Um, just so you guys can see, this new 195.75 tire, I don't know, hopefully, let me, let me pull this shock out of the way since it's still loose, and I can, I'm going to lean it back, you can see, looks pretty tight, I know, but we do still have clearance. There you go, that's a better. Now with the light down below, you can really see it. We still do have plenty of clearance between the swing arm and the tire, so that shouldn't be an issue. We actually, I think, I'm gonna have to look at the drive shaft side, because that side was really close on the last tire. You couldn't have hardly gotten a credit card in there. Oh yeah, we have ample space in there now compared to what we used to it was a lot tighter before so that's that's all mounted up 
Uh, any rate, guys, I'm going to call it a night for tonight. And then I'll get the shocks back on. Um, probably won't do that on video. But stay tuned because next, once I get the rear end of this bike back together, get the saddlebags on. As I'm putting the saddlebags on, I'm going to show you guys what the um, nut cage modification is. So if you have questions about that, stay tuned. I'm going to have that video up pretty before too long. Then we're also going to do the uh, D-smog on the engine and the front wheel bearings. So stay tuned. Those will be two separate videos. Um, I hope you enjoyed this one, guys. Don't forget, get out there and get your hands dirty. You might have a little fun doing it. Please don't forget to rate it. Subscribe if you haven't. Questions, throw them down in the comments. I'd be more than happy to answer them for you. We will see you on the next one.